Welcome to UNSW Science. I'm here today to talk to the very famous American theoretical physicist, Professor Brian Greene. Hello, Brian. Hi. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. <laughs> Your research deals with the very fundamental questions about our universe, time, space. Now, could you tell us what's inspired you in the first place to become a theoretical physicist? Yeah, you know, I, I had the experience I think many of us in all walks of life have. When I was quite young, 11, 12, 13, a sense of why am I here, what's the point of it all? Mm -hmm. And as I began to ask people who I thought would know the answer, it became clear that nobody had any answer for questions like that. So it struck me that rather than trying to find the answers, perhaps understanding the questions better would be the next best thing. You know, not understanding how the universe is per se this way or that, but what was the mechanism that brought it into existence? Not necessarily understanding what the purpose of life is, but understanding how did life even come to be? So that sort of drove me in the direction of these ideas. And obviously you become the expert in string theory. What are these strings? Yeah, yeah. So the, in fact, the name is quite evocative of what the theory suggests. It says that inside the familiar particles that we know about, which are things like electrons, neutrinos, photons, quarks, whatever, inside each particle is a little tiny filament. Mm -hmm. It looks like a piece of string why we call it string theory. And these little filaments, they're basically filaments of energy. They can vibrate, just like the string on a musical instrument can vibrate. These can vibrate too. Now, they don't produce tones, of course. They produce a different kinds of particles. So a string, if you will, is a, just a, a, an embodiment of particles that has the capacity to generate distinct species by virtue of the distinct vibrational patterns. Yeah, the string theory, I think, came with a few surprises, such as that our universe perhaps needs more dimensions that yes. we are familiar with. There are two main answers that have been put forward. One possibility, and that's the one I focused on, is the extra dimensions could be all around us, just crumpled to such a fantastically small size that even though they exist, we don't see them with the naked eye or even with our powerful magnifying equipment. The other possibility is that the extra dimensions are bigger, but that light cannot travel through those other dimensions, and therefore, therefore we don't see them. And either way, you're basically saying they could be here even though we don't have direct evidence. I also wanted to ask you then about multi-universes. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so where does theory, where, where does this idea come from? Crazy people. <laughs> Just, you you know, don't listen to those people. <laughs> is it related to string theory It, it is, at all? it is. Okay. And so, you know, the goal, the dream when I was a graduate student was that string theory would yield a unique single universe that would have all the characteristics that we observe, and that would be it. We'd be done, in some sense, with the fundamental description. As we have researched string theory over the decades, that has not happened. Mm -hmm. Instead, the more we look, the more we see that string theory can give rise to this universe, or this one, or this one, or this one, and they all have distinct properties. Now, we thought for a long time that maybe we just need more mathematics that will pick one or the other, and that still could be true. But others have come along and said, look, take the math seriously. Maybe what it's really telling us is that there really are these many universes, and we just happen to be in one of them, the one that supports our form of life. Now, this is very controversial in the community. Yeah. People think it's perhaps giving up. Others think it may be a different way of thinking about things, but maybe that's really how things are. You've written a lot about time, so what would be your definition of time? Time is that which allows change or that which prevents everything in the universe from happening simultaneously. Right. But beyond that, it's hard to really talk about a fundamental definition of what it is. Is it then possible to travel in back in time? Back in time, I don't know. But forward in time, yeah. But math allows that. Math at the moment <laughs> allows that. And I think many of us are of the opinion that when we understand the laws better, we probably will see that the math does not actually allow us to travel back in time. But to the future is a completely different story, and we know how to do that. We know how to jump. We do it slowly. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't simply mean that we age second by second. I mean, if you want to see what the Earth is like 
a billion years from now, Einstein taught us how to do it. You hang out near the edge of a black hole, or you go into space near the speed of light, and a round trip journey, and you come back. That's and this is time travel. No other way of describing yeah, no, it. That's, that's true, I yeah. agree. We read uh, Brian Greene thinks you might be a hologram. So is that right? Well, not, I'm not the only one who thinks that's <laughs> true. So, so, you know, this is an idea that really comes from researchers in string theory, like a friend of mine, Leonard Susskind at Stanford, or Juan Maldacena at the Institute for Advanced Study. And the wor their work and a lot of others does suggest that what we consider to be the real 3D reality might actually be a holographic projection of laws, information, and ideas that exist on a thin two-dimensional surface that surrounds us. Yeah. So much as a hologram, a real one is you know, a thin piece of plastic, you illuminate it, creates a 3D image. We could, in some sense, be the 3D projection of that more fundamental description. So it's not the same as Plato's cave. It's the reverse in some sense, right? Because uh, in some sense, you know, what we were seeing in the 3D world, that was the pale reflection of a flatter version right. that was living on the surface that surrounds us. So it kind of takes Plato's cave and flips it inside out. Well, time is this very strange thing. We never have enough of it when we have fun. Yep. Professor Green, thank you very much for your time. It was My pleasure. A real pleasure Great. talking to thank you. you. Thank you.